couples, how you doing? This is Tanetta Clay, your relationship coach and Speak Your Truth. And I wanted to come to you with this bonus video and it's talking about setting your couple's boundaries. So I kind of just wanted to read some things to you all as far as boundaries and some of the things that you all can think about in your relationship. Because I know I talked about boundaries in a few of the lessons um, that you've listened to already. And you're probably wondering, like, how do I set my boundaries in my relationship? Well, I'm going I, I, I'm, I'm to talk to you about that right now. But first, I kind of want to read you the definition of what a boundary is. And the boundary, um, as far as Webster talk, talks about, I'm going to have to read this to you now. Boundaries, it says something that indicates a border or a limit. So that's what a boundary is, something that indicates a border or a limit. And we all know that when we set our personal boundaries, and I hope that you have created your personal boundaries. If not, this will definitely be a good time to do so before you all set your couple's boundaries. But setting your personal boundaries, you, of course, setting those boundaries, knowing your limit as far as what you're going to do for other people and what you're not going to do for other people, how you want other people to respect you, and, of course, to value you. Like I said, those are your boundaries. And you have to set those individually and as a couple. And like I said, individually, you have to know, of course, what you're, how, how you want folks to respect you, how much of your self-worth you want to put out there, of course, and, and, have, that, and have others to, of course, abide by that, I guess I put it that way. You have to know how much you're going to take from others, how much you're going to run yourself ragged if you're one of those folks who are, is always a yes person and cannot say no. You have to, at some point, set some boundaries for yourself so that you can, of course, receive your self-care, so that you can, of course, recoup and, 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 and relax and that kind of thing in order to get back to your, 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 your peaceful state of mind. And like I said, couples have the same exact thing. Relationships have the same exact thing. And like I said, let me read you, because I have something written down about personal boundaries that I want to make sure that you all are clear with. And it says, personal boundaries. Taking responsibility for your own actions and emotions while not taking responsibilities for the actions and emotions of others. So that's definitely something else as well. Like I said, for all the yes people and they're not able to say no, sometimes we take on everybody else's um, anger and pain and bills and trying to pay this for them and trying to take them to the store and do all these things. Like I said, we have to set those boundaries, how much we're going to do for other people whether it's mentally, physically, emotionally, however you want to put it, taking action, that kind of thing. We definitely have to set those limits and those boundaries for ourselves in order for us to stay healthy within. And like I said, the relationship-wise, your relationship has boundaries as well. And if you haven't established those, that's what this bonus session is going to talk to you about as far as some different boundaries that you can set with your partner and ways to go about doing that. Like I said, definitely some ways to go about doing that. After I read all these, you can, of course, sit down with your partner write these down, that kind of thing, and go over these with your partner, and so you all can discuss these kind of things. Like I said, you, you wouldn't know what your boundaries are and what your partner is willing to do for you if you haven't asked. So you definitely have to ask. This, these are, it shouldn't be a hopefully a hard conversation to have unless there are some boundaries that you never talk to your partner about or some things that your partner brings up that they may want that you're refusing to do, that kind of thing. Like I said, it's all about compromise. We have to compromise on everything that we do. In our relationship. So like I said, the boundaries are included. There is not just one way or the highway. Some people do have relationships like that, but it makes it hard for you and your partner to, of course, get along and to compromise and to join as one. Because, of course, you're setting your own, this is, it, it, it's only this way or the highway. Push, and sometimes that does push your partner away. And that's sometimes, uh, well, I can't say sometimes, a lot of times, let your partner know that you don't care what they say, you don't care how they think is your way or the highway. And like I said, when you're coming together to set these boundaries, like I, as a couple, like I said, you definitely have to know that you have to compromise with these things. So let me go ahead and get started, y'all. I'm going to start. I'm going to be reading this to you all as well because I have lots of them written down. So I want to make sure I get through all of these with you all. So let me see. Boundaries. Um, like I said, the couple's boundaries. Some of these are just examples. Some of these you don't have to use in your relationship. Some of these you may already have set. I don't know. But if you don't, now will be a good time for you all to, of course, inject those things into your relationship to make sure you both are being respected and both of you all, of course, being valued. So, so like I said, the first one is how you all will fight and not go into bed angry. That's something that you all have to decide about how you all are going to fight, hopefully fighting fair. That's, that's, that's what the whole basis, uh, most of the basis for this, um, this, this particular series is about fighting fair. But you all have to decide how you all are going to fight, whether you're going to wait until you get home to talk about it all the time, or you're going to talk about it in the car, or 
whether you're going to talk about it when you're angry or give your partner time to calm down, and then you all come back together and talk about it. And I did put this other part on there, not going to bed angry. We have to decide that. I know some people have a rule about not going to bed angry because I know I'm, I heard and I've said the same thing as well, that anything can happen. You can die in your sleep. Anything can happen. And I don't want to go to bed angry. Me and you mad at each other and when anything can happen, we have to, of course, work this out before we go to bed. And that way we all can have, of course, a peaceful night rest, I guess I put it that way as well. So like I said, definitely that's something that you will have to, you two will have to decide within your relationship. Let me see. Also, when you get time alone, you all have to decide when that's, that, that's the boundaries that you all have to set as far as when you're going to get time alone throughout your day, how long, at what time, all that kind of stuff. You all have to set those boundaries. It can't just be that your partner, of course, goes to their man or woman cave for hours and hours and hours, and you know you have housework to do or you have to help tend to the kids or you all got to pay bills together or you all have to do whatever, cook dinner together, whatever it is. Like I said, you definitely have to know when you get time alone and not just expect your partner to just give you that time without, of course, you all talking about it and setting some kind of ground rules, I guess to put it that way. And maybe that's what boundaries to me and more are, are ground rules for your relationship. So you can look at them that way as well. Excuse me. I mean, how are you going to act on social media? Social media. Okay, we all know that social media can, of course, break up a relationship because I've, I've heard about it and that kind of thing. I have that hasn't happened to me, but I've heard known folks that that's happened to, and of course it can of course it can make a break or make or break your relationship. You all have to decide how you're going to of course use and utilize social media within your relationship. If you have a partner that does not want to be online and no, doesn't want anybody um, knowing that you all are dating that kind of thing or whatever the case may be, you have to respect that. They obviously they they must have a reason for that. You have to ask them. Like I said, some folks don't want to be. Um, in pictures and in posts all the time, or this is my boo, or this is my so-and-so. Some folks don't even like to take pictures. So like I said, you definitely have to come to some kind of compromise on how you all are going to treat social media. Like I said, some folks like to be on the phone, not paying attention to their partner sometimes. And I may be talking to one of y'all on the phone, doing something while you're supposed to be having quiet time. You can't allow social media to, of course, distract you from your relationship. I guess I put it that way. And like I said, that's definitely something that you all have to work out how you're going to implement that into your relationship and how it's going to look. Um, what you'll share with each other. Sharing, I know sharing a lot of people may not want to share. Some folks are only are only, only child, children like like I am. I, I'm still having a hard, I guess, not, not a hard time, but still just kind of like learning how to share and this is not mine all the time. It's, it's ours. It's, it's for us, that kind of thing. Like I said, you have to change your language. But as far as sharing with each other, you have to decide what you're going to share with each other, whether it's information, whether it's the bills, whether it's, I don't know, whatever it is in the house or taking care of the kids. You all have to figure that out, how you all are going to share with each other. It could just be snacks. If, that's, if it's just snacks, then how are you going to share the snacks with each other? Are you going to eat up everything and not tell your partner or expect your partner to, to get more? You have to, like I said, you have to work on those things and how you all are going to share. How often you will communicate that's another thing. Like I said, you definitely have to decide whether you want to set some type of guideline for you all talking, communicating about deep issues, that kind of thing, once a week or talking about sex once a month or however you all want to do it. Like I said, you definitely have to decide how you all, how often you will communicate. Whether it's, and hopefully I'm sure it's going to be every single day. It may not be about those heavy things, those triggers or the behaviors or the issues that you're having, that kind of thing. You can save those times for whether it's once a week or every two weeks or once a month, however you all want to do it, or every, every three months. Like I said, you have to set those kind of uh, boundaries, but you have to make sure it's something that you both can, of course, agree on and that you all are, of course, compromising with. And like I said, there's not going to be just one way or the highway. You have to compromise. Like I said, these boundaries are all going to be about, about compromising and coming together on this. Um, and also how you will share the household responsibilities and chores. That's something that you all have to, of course, lay down the ground rules for, lay down the boundaries for. Nobody's going to know how you want to do the chores if you've never even talked to your partner about it and you're expecting them to, of course, wash dishes with you every single day and every single night or whatever it is or, or do the laundry every weekend and you haven't even voiced those things. Like I said, you definitely have to talk to your partner about those things so they can know how to best, of course, assist in the household and how those responsibilities and the bills will be paid in the household. Um, like I said, you definitely have to talk about that. And that's actually the next thing, about how the bills will be paid and by whom. 
bills. Of course, I'm assuming that both of y'all are working um, and that you all, of course, I guess, contributing to the household, to the bills, um, electricity, gas, the house note, that kind of thing. Have you all have it worked out for your partner just pays the house note, you pay the electricity or the bills or whatever it is, then that's fine. However, you all have it worked out, you all have to discuss those things. Don't just expect your partner to pay everything and you haven't contributed nothing or expect your partner to pay everything and you haven't even said anything or you want to pay this bill because you want to feel like you're contributing, but your partner doesn't even ask you. Like I said, you definitely have to ask those things and you have to talk about those things. These are your ground rules. I guess I call them couples ground rules instead of boundaries. You know, that's what these seem more like to me, actually. But you can use whatever terminology you want to use. Let me see. What you will do and, um, and won't do for each other. You definitely have to, of course, talk about that, what you're going to do and not do for each other. Some folks may expect for you to get roses every single week. I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, then that's fine. But some partners may not even want to do that, one, may not even want to spend the extra cash or buy the, buy the roses or take you out to dinner all the time, that kind of thing. Like I said, we definitely have to talk about those things. Some partners may not even want to, uh, well, some, some, well one, one, one partner may want to ask the other partner, how am I dressed, how do I look, that kind of thing. The other partner may not, may not even be comfortable enough to, to tell you that I don't like the way this looks or take, try on this, try on that. But hopefully you all have gotten to that point by now. But like I said, sometimes you have to decide those kind of things, what you're going to do and not do for each other especially when it comes to sex and in the bedroom. Some folks may like oral sex and some folks may not. Like I said, you definitely have to talk about that. If you're one who likes oral sex and your partner does not, that's going to create an issue that you all have to compromise on and think about and talk about and come to some kind of ground basis with. Like I said, you can't just let these issues go on and on and on. And you haven't discussed or talked about these things and you're unhappy or sexually or whatever the case may be, you have to talk about that, what you will and will not do for each other. And how often you will have, um, I guess speaking about sex, <laughs> how often you all, how how and when you will have sex and date nights. And you all have to decide that whether it's just quickies every day or however you want to do it, or if it's sex once a week, if you, especially if you have kids and both of you all are working, got crazy schedules, sometimes you may not be able to do, do it every single day. Sometimes you can't fit it in every single day. It just depends on the couple. But like I said, you definitely have to talk about that and, and, and decide what, what that's going to look like for you all. Especially if one has a higher sex drive than the other, that may create an issue. So you have to talk about these things, decide on these things, and figure things out. Not just let them go on and on and on and somebody's unhappy or and, and, and not satisfied sexually. Because that is going to create an issue at some point. And, and the date nights as well. You all have to decide how, how often you all want to have your date nights. I try to push for once a week, but like I said, some folks may not have the, the time or the funds to do so. But your date night doesn't have to be anything that you pay for if you don't want to. You can create a date night at home, meaning that you and your partner can, of course, cook dinner or have an enjoy for movie night, that kind of thing. You don't really have to go anywhere. But like I said, you definitely have to decide how many times a month you're going to have date night, if it's going to be every single week. Um, some may have it every single day. It just depends on the person, how much, how much fun you got and how much time you have. But like I said, at least once a week, every every two weeks if you can, or at least once once a month at, at, at most, I guess, I, put, I mean, at the at the least, I guess I put it that way. Like I said, those date nights and having sex and that kind of thing is, is it, I mean, it's not, it doesn't make the relationship, but it can, of course, break the relationship. It can, of course, leave somebody out, leave somebody out thinking that you don't want them as a partner because you haven't t taken them on a date or, or even asked if they want to go out somewhere, that kind of thing. Folks want to be acknowledged and folks want to feel like they're being loved and, and appreciated. So like I said, that's definitely something that's important for you all to, of course, discuss and think about. Let me see how you will commit to each other. It's the next one. Okay, so this one is is everybody. I know a, a lot of folks, are, well, not a lot, but some folks have a monogamous relationship. Some folks have multiple partners. They're swingers. Um, they're out different things, I guess I put it that way. They practice DD, BDSM or whatever the case with, with several folks or whatever it is. Want to go to swinger parties or they're just you and, you and your partner only. You all have to decide that. You all have to decide how you're going to commit to each other. If you're committing to each other, I guess both of you are on the same page. If it's something to add somebody else into the relationship, like a swinger relationship or something like that, you all have to decide that and talk about that, not just expect your partner to do so because you said it. Like I said, you definitely have to decide how you're going to commit to each other. And while I'm speaking about that with, with the boundaries and with the setting the ground rules, committing to each other, of course, 
depends on whatever kind of relationship you want to have with your partner. Not that you're just going to cheat on them and all that kind of stuff. And if that's in your relationship, you all have to talk about that. Like I said, that's definitely a, some kind of way that that person is trying to commit to you, I guess I put it that way. And if it's something that you're not liking, something that most people do not like to be cheated on. So like I said, definitely that's something that's going on, going on in a relationship that's definitely serious. And making sure that you all are talking about that. And of course, if you can't come to some kind of grounds, then I mean, you have to figure out what you're going to do with your relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. But like I said, you definitely have to have to have to talk about those things. How you want to commit to each other. Let me see. Okay, I guess that's it, y'all. I just want to make sure that I talk about that in this bonus video. <clears throat> like I said, because I know definitely we're dealing with boundaries, personal boundaries, and definitely the relationship boundaries, couples boundaries, or couples ground rules, as I was going to call it. Without you all discussing those things and actually setting these rules, you cannot just expect your partner is going to do this or do that or, or going to know exactly what you're talking about. You have to, of course, set these ground rules and, and these boundaries and talk to your partner about them while you're always setting them, I put it that way. So with this bonus video, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a little bit of homework, I guess, uh, growth work, I put it that way. With this, I want you all to, of course, sit down. It does not have to be a long, drawn-out weeks and weeks and weeks or hours and hours and hours, but you all have to sit down and kind of write out like a list of your actual couple's ground rules, your couple's boundaries. And you can use some of the things I went over. If not, you can, of course, use your own. That's up to you. But you, of course, want to make sure that you're setting ground rules about your how, how, you, how you're going to spend your um, your time alone and when you're going to get that time alone, your sex schedule, your your, your date night schedule, how you're going to act on social media, all those things. Like I said, you definitely have to make sure that you're all talking about those and setting the ground rules for those things. So with that, I want to say thank you couples for looking at this bonus video. And this is something, like I said, that I want to do for you all too, because I know I've been talking about boundaries and the lessons and that kind of thing. And I'm sure some of you all are probably like, well, how the heck am I going to set the boundaries? I don't even know what they are. So in this video, like I said, I gave you some examples, some things that you can use, and some ways that you can, of course, sit down with your partner and establish those boundaries. Like I said, definitely utilize this. You don't have to utilize the bonus video, but I would highly suggest it, especially if you're having some, like I said, the communication issue, issues, which this is what this series is based off of. So a lot of times those ground rules and those boundaries we, we, we have not set and just have all these expectations that creates issues for us and our partner. So like I said, definitely make sure that you're sitting down with your partner. I highly recommend this, do, doing this bonus activity. Sit down with your partner and set your couple's ground rules and set your couple's boundaries. So with that, I want to get off here. Like I said, I'm Tanetta Clay. I'm your relationship coach at Speak Your Truth, and I wanted to bring you all this bonus video to get you all in the mode of setting your own couple's boundaries so that you can know how to work with each other. And with that, take care of you all. I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.